Steve made the first attempt at this damp floor, and amazingly, the boat chugged its way through, up and over the wet rock shelf, and on around the corner to where the three braids of water came back as one river. As the boats continued on, down trees became a regular part of the river, but with no jet components hanging at or below the bottom of the boat, and the mercury jet unit elevated on the boat's unique tunnel hull, sliding over trees, even those with 14-inch and larger diameters, became a non-issue. The most potentially dangerous obstacle, and something that can always make these river adventurers go from an adrenaline rush to a hypothermic nightmare, are sweepers. And there is no shortage of sweepers in this area. Sweepers are low-hanging trees and root systems that protrude from the side of the riverbank, almost daring you to get near them. A boat floating without power into these sweepers will almost always get swamped, sending the passengers, guns, and gear into the water faster than you can say, holy sh**. Sweepers are the very reason that Compo designed for the SJX, a helm-mounted jet cleanout lever. In a typical jet boat, when you get rocks or sticks in the intake, you have little or no power to maneuver away from danger. And danger tends to creep into the boat very fast. With the advancement of the foot lever mounted intake stomp lever in the early 1990s, the driver or one of the passengers could go run to the stern of the boat and push down on the spring loaded cleanout lever to clear the jet intake of debris. On this stretch of the river, there is simply no reaction time for that. And for that very reason, every SJX jet boat is now equipped with a simple and convenient cleanout lever mounted right where the driver can grab it and clean out debris from the pump in less than two seconds. Another 30 or 40 minutes of tight, twisty river running, and we knew we were getting close. At this point, not only were we looking for enough water to safely come off plain, we are also looking for a high bank with a pair of strong trees to have the honor of holding up our sign for at least another season. And there they were. As we pulled the boat to the bank, with the turbulent water trying to shove us back into the current, we tied up the boat and proudly hung our new 8-foot vinyl sign. This year, the sign reads, If you can read this, you must be driving an SJX jet boat from Compos. We stayed at the site, took pictures, and had a celebratory beverage before heading back down through what we knew would be a white-knuckle adventure. Rodney used his spot, an emergency locator device, to text his girlfriend our location, letting her know all was well. These devices showed the recipient of the text the exact location of the person sending the message, both with the actual coordinates and on a map. When we returned to cell phone range that following Sunday, Rodney anxiously asked her if she had received the text with the coordinates. She replied that she had, but asked why we had hiked into the foothills of the mountains to send the text. She was shocked to learn that Rodney was actually sitting in one of the boats when he sent the spot text. We laughed when she told Rodney it appeared that we were sheep hunting. Amazingly, these boats navigated back down with very little problem, unlike our return trips in the past. We collectively gave the credit for this to the Black Ice Bottoms, our name for the UHMW full coverage option that both of these boats had been upgraded to. Several times we got hung up on a shallow gravel bar, and amazingly were able to just tap the throttle and power our way back into deeper water thanks to the combination of the elevated tunnel hull and Black Ice Bottom. In years past, it would take at least four people lifting and grunting on the boat to break it free from where it was high-centered. As we are not getting any younger, Steve mentioned to Craig that this technology has saved us a fair amount of money by not having to stock up on Advil and Ben Gay. The logs we had jumped over on the way upriver were now slightly lower in the river and wet, making the downstream run over them effortless.
After about two hours in the downstream run, we came around a wide, sweeping left-hand corner, where we spotted a beautiful bull caribou staring at us about 100 yards away. Perfect. The second goal of our river challenge was hopefully about to be met. Steve chopped the throttle, killed the engine, and began drifting as the curious boo finally decided it was a good time to vacate the area. Jennifer was the designated shooter, but just when she got the large bull in her sights and reached for the trigger, the boat tapped a boulder and she was forced to reposition herself, unable to get a clean shot off. As the caribou headed into the brush, Rodney, our backup sniper, connected with a perfect shot, courtesy of a 375 Ultra Mag slug. Game over. This has been a nice day. That looks like a wolf track over here, bear right there, caribou tracks through there. As we still had a long way to go to get back to our base camp, we chose to gut the caribou and hoist the entire animal onto the front deck of the boat and continue downriver where we could relax and take our time field dressing it at camp. It dawned on us that up to this point on that entire trip, the most energy we collectively expended was not getting our 1,800-pound SJX jet boats off of a gravel bar, but hoisting the 350-pound caribou into the nose of the SJX. All right, good job, team. We got her. Team SJX. Team SJX. Set the record, drop a boo. Let's get a bear on the way back. Okay. Remember Rodney and I, we dropped a moose, and then 10 minutes later, come around the corner, there's a grizz on the bank. It's all good. All right. Good job. After the caribou was put into game bags and hung on our meat pole, we sat around the campfire, had a cold beer, and reflected on everything that had happened that amazing day. Somehow, we all knew how hard it was going to be to wait until next year when we try to outdo ourselves with another assault on the river. After all, if not us, who? Never meaning no harm Beats all you never saw Been in trouble with the law Since the day they was born Straightening the curves Flattening the hills Someday the mountain might get them But the law never will Just a good old boy Never meaning no harm it's all you never saw, been in trouble with the law since the day they was born. Making their way, the only way they know how. That's just a little bit more than the law will allow. Just a good old boy, never meaning no harm. Someday the mountain might get them, but the law never will. Just a good old boy, never meaning no harm. Beats all you never saw, been in trouble with the law since the day they was born. Straightening the curves, flattening the hills. Someday the mountain might get them, but the law never will. Making their way the only way they know how. That's just a little bit more than the law will allow. Just a good old boy. They wouldn't change if they could. Fighting the system like a two modern day Robin Hood.